Welcome to Politics and Red. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. It's been a long week. It's been a tiring week. But we prevailed and we prevail and we prevail. Welcome aboard, PDR Posse. How is everybody doing today? Thank you so kindly for being here. We are going to have a great show for you today. What is the show going to be about today? Well, let's talk about it. Let's see what it's going to be about today. Title of the show, Nicole Wallace. Americans are with Biden. Dr. Gloud on Democratic filibuster bust. Racist Dan Patrick had some words. We got to talk about those words from Brother Patrick. And then, of course, we're going to talk about a state senator, a anti-vaxxer, who suddenly, he saw the light. Elvio Laluz. He saw the light. So let's see what's that all about. Welcome aboard, Deborah John. Welcome aboard. Bridge MCP says, hello all. E2247, welcome aboard. AVQ, a Oh, A.K.A. Michael Rodnan, welcome aboard, my dear brothers and sisters. Okay, let's go start with uh, the beginning of the program. We get here from Michael Rodnan. George Floyd Policing Act will reportedly not include scrapping. Will will reportedly not include scrapping qualified immunity. Changes to qualified immunity, which protects bad officers, have little chance of making it into the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. Dirty cops will continue brutalizing and killing with impunity, and the people will pay the bail for them out after they do their dirt. Establishment criminal are Democrats. Start with compromise positions and then compromise on the compromise. I want progressive Democrats who swing for the fences. Exactamente, senor. That's what we need. We need people who really go out there and fight for us all. Uh, you know, if you're not going to have qualified immunity in that, if you're going to leave qualified immunity in there, what you need to do is forget about the bill altogether. Because you go past the bill, they're going to go campaign and say, Hey, look, we passed a law enforcement bill. Things should get better. People would think things are getting better. And suddenly, just maybe POCs will start voting in a higher numbers for the Republicans. Because just maybe they're not as bad as, they thought, as we thought they were. Don't fall for it. Democrats... Forget about it. If you don't get, uh, if you don't remove qualified immunity, we want no bill. No queremos nada. Nada. Okay, continuing, we have Michael Rodney billions worth of U.S. weaponry seized by the Taliban. Military weapons, mostly small arms and, and transport vehicles fallen into opposition hands. Happens at the end of every war. Why is this a worry? Are we planning on going back there to get shot up again? Don't make us a target. Not our problem. The only military equipment I'd worry about falling into the opposition's hands are surface-to-air missiles or helicopters and jets with long-range explosive ordinances. They don't have those. All this is right-wing bubble talking points. Yes, there is, but there's one thing. They have a few planes. And the planes, uh, they'll, they'll get the weaponry and the fixes for the planes on the black market. But it doesn't matter because we can handle every single one of those planes because we don't give them these planes with the most advanced technology that we have to offer. And that I know by, from a fact, as a fact. All right. Michael Rennett, it rained for the first time ever at the summit of Greenland's ice sheet. Climate change, and we talking, uh, we taking notice yet? Rain? It should only fall as ice. Shall we mark this as the beginning of the end? Or does Greenland have to melt first? Greenland has already started melting. And the problem with Greenland is, you know, it's land, right? So the ice is on the land. So the, the, so the melt from, the, from ice from Greenland makes it into the ocean and raises the, the, raises the height. For floating ice, if the ice melts, the ocean stays the same, same uh, elevation. But if you're, if you're melting ice off of land, the ocean rises. People, we got to be serious. We got to get serious with this. Michael Rodden, oh wait, Greenland is already melting. A reminder from last month, Greenland's vast ice sheet is undergoing a surge in melting with the amount of ice vanishing in a single day to cover the whole of Florida in two inches of water. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. And then, of course, Michael is going to say, Berto, could you please read this one in full? This is another instance of people opposing the moneyed interest. Most Americans favor investing in global COVID-19 vaccine production 
According to a new poll by the 2022 voters published Thursday by Public Citizen and Lake Research Partners, Lake's a friend of mine, uh, the woman who runs that organization, found that 78% of respondents include 93% of Democrats and about two-thirds of the independents and Republicans are concerned about people who live in less wealthy countries not being able to get vaccinated. An overwhelming number of surveyed voters, 88% of Democrats, 79% of independents, 75% of Republicans, believe it is important that nations around the world have access to COVID-19, agree that world vaccination rates impact the safety of Americans, with 69% saying they favor the U.S. government investing in a program that would involve ramping up production of COVID-19 vaccines in United States and in international manufacturing centers. That is a problem with capitalism. Capitalism doesn't know how to do that kind of stuff. Because everybody has to figure out how to first make a buck. I want to know how I can make a dollar off of a saving the world. Otherwise, let the world die. Otherwise, put Americans in danger. Man, that's what I cover a whole lot in the book. How to make America utopia. We've got to make America utopia. By making America utopia, we make the world utopia. Michael Rudnan, last one. Housing is a human right petition. Some 40 million Americans are behind on rent due to the pandemic. We can't leave our people behind. Sign and share the requested petition. It's in the feed. All right, E2247, welcome aboard. He says, hello, relatives. How's life in the fast lane this beautiful day? What I'd miss? What's to eat? What's to eat? We've got a lot of food. It's just not right here over the lines. Hello, Bridge MCP. Hey, PDR peeps. And then, of course, there's Nanette Bird-Smith. Welcome, Nanette Bird-Smith. Welcome. Uh, let's see. Defund the police was rallying cry in 2020. Minneapolis is about to vote on what that means. Uh, welcome aboard, Nanette Bird-Smith. Uh, that was from Bridge MCP. Rose William, welcome aboard. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Who else have we got? Julie Van Osdell, welcome to Politics Done Right. Michael Rudden says, Bertos, as always, thanks for reading out my comments, sir. You bring good comments. Carl Cox, COVID-19 vaccine for all who want it. The common good for all. Corruption is not good for anyone. You're absolutely right. Folks, we are going to have a great show for you. I have some great videos for you today. But before we get busy, I want you to throw messages in that field because I don't have an interview for you today. So anything that you want to talk about uh, as we go through these videos, be sure to put it in the feed. Let's go ahead and get started with uh, COVID. And the reason I want to get started with COVID is Tom C. Here to watch, listen, maybe comment later. Welcome aboard, Tom C. Listen to this senator. Listen to this senator. Rose Williams, without getting rid of qualified immunity, good luck with any kind of serious police reform. Absolutely. So a great show today for once. E2247. Every time you say for once, brother, come on, man. Give me a positive affirmation. No, actually, it's positive. I love you, brother. Maywood, welcome, my friend. Come on in. All right, let's go ahead and play that first one, and then we'll get busy. It's about time is what I title it. It's about time. Mississippi's healthcare system is on the verge of collapse. They're even given, uh, allowing got medics to do the work of nurses in the trucks, in the trucks that they're delivering people. It's just on the verge. Why is it on the verge? Because of incompetent leadership. They have a governor that refuses to keep or have a, a, a mask mandate. They have a governor and senators that continue to live in the land of La La Land. But you know what? Every so often, reality hits people and some change. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. We spoke to one person. He's actually a local politician, a Republican state senator, who in his own words was an anti-vaxxer. But recently, he had a change of heart and decided to roll up his sleeve. Listen to why. I've been uh, one of the anti-vaxxers for quite a while now. And one of the main reasons why is nobody really knows what the long-term side effects could be from the vaccine. But I'm a numbers guy as well. And watching the numbers pour in to the Department of Health and seeing that um, I mean, the cases surge and 98% of them were unvaccinated individuals, it was, it was kind of a common sense thing for me that it was time to, to go ahead and, and get vaccinated. And now that I've done it, oh yeah, absolutely. I wish I would have done it back in January. 
Um, but I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. Uh, but it's it's it, this is some serious stuff. He's hoping that by speaking out now, talking to us, other people who are unvaccinated and maybe lean the same way he does politically, that they will reconsider not getting vaccinated and at the very least have some conversations with their doctors. Mississippi was led by poor politicians. Will these politicians attempt to atone to them for themselves? Will the, will the residents of Mississippi make them pay the price? Will the residents of Mississippi realize that they are just simply now too late? They themselves, including this politician that had a change of heart after back in January being an anti-vaxxer. One of the things about leadership is it doesn't really, you don't have to have people on your side. They elected you as a leader. They know that at times they're going to disagree with you, but they're going to also know that as leader, because you are supposed to be a competent leader, that you will at least do what's right for them, and then they'll come around. Well, just like Texas is led by lousy politicians, so is Mississippi, and just about every red state governor that we have out there that is not instituting masking, is not really pushing uh, vaccination vociferously. Folks, it is... The, the millions of Americans that are that, that have the, the th hundreds of thousands of Americans that have died thus far, the blood is on the hands of these politicians. The question is, will you allow them to wash their hands, or will you allow them never again to serve and cause the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Americans again? And we cannot allow that to occur, peeps. We cannot occur that to occur. That's why we do what we do, right? That's why we do what we do. Anyhow, folks, let's see. E2247 says, the legislative institutions is not leading institution. institution. I kind of get that. Uh, Trump army is here. Impeach Biden. Okay, try. Uh, let's see. Breach, thank you for the list, Breach. I appreciate the list. Let's see if it'll fit on the screen. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I see the list, but it's not going to fit. All right. Anyhow, let's get back to business. Michael Rudnan says, kind of amazing. A Republican changed his mind about COVID, not because it hit him personally before changing his mind, actually looking at the statistical trends and following the science to weigh his opinion towards. What I don't get, Michael, is that the, the data is not new and that it's just making sense to him now. For me, that is also disconcerting. It is also disconcerting. Okay, May says, good. Where wasn't the number? Look, folks, as far as notification is concerned, uh, please go ahead and go to our channel, right? That is youtube.com slash Egberto Willies. YouTube.com slash Egberto Willies. If you go to youtube.com slash Egberto Willies, then, or, or you can just go to youtube.com slash YouTube. That is easier. YouTube.com, no, no, politicsandright.com slash YouTube. Make sure when you get to the channel, you just allow, you, you enable notification, all notifications. That way, if we write a, a YouTube post or we put you, a new YouTube post video or whatever, you'll actually get notified of that. That is the easiest way to actually do that. All right. Next video. As you know, here in Texas, and this is another COVID video, uh, Texas, because of our lousy lousy, lousy state government, we have actually, uh, we have actually made the, this pandemic much worse here. Just like you see in, Alabama, in uh, Mississippi, they're running out of beds. In Alabama, they're running out of beds. Here around Austin, there are no beds, I mean, for several million people. Uh, the hospitals are just filled up because we don't want to wear masks and the governor is not allowing schools to enforce mass mandates. It's the Texas Supreme Court just kind of put that on hold that allowed that are allowing schools to do it right now. But you know, we know that the fault that the pandemic has really taken off is really Abbott and the Republicans' fault in the state. We know that for a fact. But you know what? These guys want to point somewhere else. Check this out. When in doubt, when in doubt, just blame the other. 
for the problem you created, which is exactly what Dan Patrick did. He and the great Greg Abbott, they decided to destroy Texas. They decided to allow unmitigated spread of COVID in Texas. And now that it's a problem, what are they going to tell their people? Blame the other guy. Those black people didn't get vaccinated. And because they didn't get vaccinated, you know what? That's why the disease is spreading throughout Texas. I want you to listen to this and then let's take it on the other side because it is amazing how this is constantly done. Check this out. We're coming after your state uh, really quickly here and as a response, coming after your state yes. because the increased COVID numbers, hospitalizations, deaths are up in Texas uh, and there's a direct assault on your governor's policies and your state's policies. Yeah. Very brief response. Yeah. Well, Laura, the, the COVID is spreading, particularly uh, most of the numbers are with the unvaccinated and the Democrats like to blame Republicans on that. Well, the biggest group in most states are African-Americans who have not been vaccinated. The last time I checked, over 90% of them vote for Democrats in their major cities and major counties. So it's up to the Democrats to get, just as it's up to Republicans, to try to get as many people vaccinated. But we respect the fact that if people don't want the vaccination, we're not gonna force it on them. That's their individual right. But in terms of criticizing the Republicans for this, we're encouraging yeah. people who wanna take it to take it, but they're doing nothing for the Afri African-American community that has a, a significant high yeah number of unvaccinated TikTok people. TikTok videos. So they need we to address that. Yeah, we got a lot of TikTok. Yes. Okay, let's, uh, Jorge A. Caballero, doctor, he actually retweeted this with some data. Per the Census Bureau, 50% of unvaccinated adults in Texas are white, non-Hispanic. There are three unvaccinated white adults for every one unvaccinated black adult in Texas. One in three COVID cases in Texas have been among white individuals. Oh yeah, Dan Patrick is a racist. That is from Jorge A. Caballero. He's the one who did the particular video. But I want to take it now to the official status because El Señor Caballero had it right. But there's one thing I want to get across. In Texas, the percentage of white vaccinated 40, this is from the, uh, the K, uh, what is the name of it? Ka Kelsey Kaiser Center, or, you know, that particular organization. The It's 47% of white Texans vaccinated, 38% of black Texans vaccinated. We all know the there's a particular party that is preaching uh, freedom and that somehow vac being vaccinated somehow has something to do with removing your freedom. Let's be real here. There is one particular party that is pushing this. There are reasons why blacks, Latinos, etc., their vaccination rates aren't as high. For black people, it has to do with uh, remembrances of the Tuskegee experiment where black bodies were used for experimentation, etc. So there's a trust issue there. This is being overcome, but there's another bigger issue than that trust issue, and that is CVS deserts, all the place, places that give vaccinations, they are, while I can find them all over Kingwood, you can't find them all over South Park in Texas. So there is a material difference and with access in the way different groups in this state have for health care. I mean, we can even go further. He points out, oh, how many... Uh, that there, the percentage of people dying of COVID, people of color, the ones that are suffering the most. It doesn't matter how many white people or others go in for health care, it always turns out that the people of color have a poorer result in the entire case. So let's be real. The fact that he brought that into the debate, the fact that he brought hue, color, race into the debate shows it's deeper than he is just uh, a partisan. It really means he is a racist who wants to scapegoat like it's always done. We did something bad. Look at that's the guy who actually did it. We can talk about a whole lot of instances where when we need to find a scapegoat, when we need to find somebody that's guilty, hey, point to the other. Aren't we used to that? Point to the other. Hey, don't look here. Look there. That's where it's at. Bruce Pollard, welcome to Politics Done Right, my brother. How are you doing, sir? Michael Rudnan says, uh, Republicans have, uh, let's see, have no, st no, I think E2247 came first. Actually, no, Carl Cox came first. Uh, we have 
To GOP governors who don't want mandates such as the COVID-19 vaccine shots and mask wearing, I say that if you come down with COVID, you aren't allowed to be treated, including hospitalization. I spoke to the good doctor, Cedric, uh, Cedric Dark, about that, and he said, oh, wait, Egberto, wait, wait, wait. Uh, remember, we don't do that. But I get your point. I really get your point. And sometimes deep inside the heart, that's what you want to do. The family, the holy persons in their teaching roles and the judges in stating their judgments are the leading institutions. All the rest are following institutions. Schools, cops, soldiers, doctors, streets, and sand. All of the following institutions. It's the so-called commander-in-chief. That's from E2247. Michael Rudnan says, Republicans have no standards for what they consider an impeachable offense. Incitement to insurrection? Nah. Bringing out troops, bringing our troops home as their own le their leaders sent in into motion. Impeach. Republicans have no principles, principle morality. Republicans have no principle with supermajority polling support. All Republicans have is the drive to attain, maintain, and wield power for their ends. They are not winning 2022. I think even with voter suppression, and I don't want to say this too loud because I want everybody to continue going out. But I think even with voter suppression, we're going to clean the clock in 22. I think a lot of people are necessarily wearsome, but we'll see. Carl Cox, Trump army members are ignorant, gullible fools of the first magnitude. I don't like to call it out like that because I'm the person who wrote the book. It's worth it how to talk to your right-wing relative friends and neighbors. So what I say is convert those words into something that's going to attract Julie Van Asdel, like Berto, the biggest surprise was that Ro Khanna's wife has quite a bit invested in war. Not surprising to me at all. Trump army, Carl Cox, uh, leave that alone. Not Nanette Bird smith oh, just come down to Florida if you have COVID and you can go to a local library for the DeSantis monoclonal antibody claim. Yeah, one of his great donors, big investor in the monoclonal, uh, monoclonal what is it called? Therapy, right? All right, let's see. Oh, my God, LM. <laughs> it's, not, it's not blacks, racist. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, British MCP. All uh, right, let's continue. Let's see what else I got here. Uh, but he says, but it's only used for certain people. There is a criteria to get it. Yeah, you, can, you have to be really near, uh, recently infected. Uh, Rose Williams says, uh, Nanette DeSantis is trying to make money for his buddy. Tom C. says, free dumb. <laughs> I, that is the absolute first time, and I've been at this a long time. Tom C., you pulled out a good one. Free dumbed. I <laughs> Folks, for those of you listening on podcast, uh, Tom C., one of our great supporters here at Politics Done Right, um, he, oh, by the way, I forgot, Tom C. became an extended member of uh, Politics Done Right, uh, the pod PDR Posse, and he is offering, uh, the, 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 the one that he selected, he has two books to offer. Is it two books or three books? I think it's three books to offer for the, for the thing that he has. So here's what we're going to do for Tom C. Uh, we have one of each book, and you guys know which books they are. Uh, it is... It's, I mean, How to Make America Utopia, it's worth it, and as I see it, a free book, a free one of each of these books. So if you want a book, send an email to info at politicsdoneright.com, info at politicsdoneright.com. And what I'll do is if I get more than three requests, I'll put it in a basket, all right, and uh, no, I won't put it in a basket. I'll just n number them. And I'll tell you guys to pick a number from one to however many I have. And when you guys pick the number, you're going to decide who are the people that get the books. Okay? That's how it'll do it. So uh, do you send me info at politicsunright.com if you want a book. And I tell you what, I'm not going to make it that you uh, let, I, I'm not going to, I'm giving away three books. It can be three of the same or three, or three distinctly or whatever. Just go ahead and put which book you want. And then what we'll do is you, the, 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 the posse will determine who gets the book based on the numbers that they pick when I, when I get all the requests in. All right, but I love that one. Free Dumb is how Tom C. spells it. And it's spelled F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B. 
insisting on your rights over the rights of others to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So here is the deal. Freedom is one thing, and freedom is the other thing. I love that one, Tom. See, I love it. All right, Bruce Pollard said, so it's not black or white, it's Texas. Exactly, brother, brother Pollard. Nanette Bird Smith says, oh, that's to, to Bleach. Yeah, this buddy has the investment. Rose Williams says, don't look at the man behind the curtain. No, you don't want to do that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Aunt, uh, Michael Rodney says, anti-vaxxers run into the hospital after they get sick with COVID. Should they be put in the back of the line? Egberto, after the show, please give this a watch. Will do. I better queue it up. Great. Eric Hayes, Biden pants on fire and so is the administration. You, uh, you know, you, go, you hate Biden so much, you no longer think straight, but it's okay. Got caught lying? Oh, my God, Biden got caught lying. I imagine you found out on Fox News. Uh, let's see. Tom C., too funny. Bridge MCP, ah, uh, cool. All right. Time for our, well, it's 3.30. It's time for my ask. Folks, please remember to support Politics Done Right. Uh, we could not do this without you. If you are on YouTube, click on that join button. Click on that join button uh, under YouTube. If you are not on YouTube, you can also still join the Posse through YouTube by going to politicsunright.com slash YouTube. Politicsunright.com slash YouTube. Uh, you want one of our, our cups, the cups designed by Bridge MCP. Love that cup. A lot of people drink out of that cup. They sit down, they listen to Politics Done Right, or they watch Politics Done Right. And while they're watching or listening to Politics Done Right, they're drinking out of it like Bridge on the screen right now, drinking out of her the cup that she designed. So consider getting the cup. I just placed the link in the screen. Uh, likewise, you can go ahead and get our books, politicsunright.com slash books, politicsunright.com slash books. Egberto, money order on the way to you. Thank you, my brother. You're a good man. Could not do it without you at all. Carl Cox and all my other great supporters. Uh, let's see, folks. Let's see. Okay. So get the books, please. Uh, we, the, I, I guarantee you, you will get something out of the books. Um, it actually, it makes a lot of people able to converse politically just fine. Tom C., save this for later. Egberto, mind putting this on the screen? Let's see what it is. I will put it on the screen right away, Brother Tom, because I simply love it. Check out what Tom was talking about, guys. Let's, let's, get, let's get Tom's stuff on the screen right now. There it is. There it is. Freedom. That's freedom for you. Anyway, continuing. You can also support us by going to politicsdoneright.com slash support, which has all the different methods of supporting us. Hey, guess what? We even added cash out and and uh, what are all those other electronic transfer things? We added a whole lot of a whole lot of options for you. So however you want to support politics done right. Because I guarantee you, we need these types of programming. And by the way, something that I always tell people, we need a lot of these independent media programs coexisting. Right now I work, you know, with a whole lot of other ones as well. We share info, you know, uh, you know, Tom Hartman come on my show. I go on Tom Hartman's show. Uh, I also go on uh, uh, um, Benjamin's show. I go on Tom's show. I go on Tim's show. So we, we exchange. And that is important for us to get this progressive space moving. That is what we have to do. Because it, as you can see with the media, that you know, there's, there's a piece of the media that came out today where... Well, I'll show it to you tomorrow because I didn't have a time to process it at all. But you'll see how the, the you'll see how corrupt some, not all, but some in the media are. I'm happy for somebody like Nicole Wallace because I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. Nicole Wallace hit the nail on the head once again. This time uh, it's media versus reality. The media versus what the people want. I want you to listen to her, and then we'll take it on the other side. It's all, you know, quite a big deal what everyone's going through this, this week looking at Afghanistan, and it's, it's a complex dilemma. What we have, you made such a clear point about where the public stands, and I was watching you. This was when President Biden was making that first address to the nation this week. So we had this teed up, and then I said, well, let's play it for Nicole here. This is what you said. 95% of the American people will agree with everything he just said. 
95% of the press covering this White House will disagree. And for an American president to finally be completely aligned with such an overwhelming majority of what the American people think about Afghanistan is probably a tremendous relief to the American people. I thought it was really striking. My question for you is, is this true as the week goes on? And, and if yes, why is it hard for people in D.C. to get it? I don't want to blame either side of the equation. Um, but there are different considerations. I think the national security establishment, including current and former national security officials, will always look at pre-9-11 Afghanistan with trepidation and trauma. I talked to Mary Trump today. There's, there's real trauma there in looking at the history of Afghanistan. Now, there's all sorts of other history that suggests that a military operation was doomed for failure. And that might be the history that I think President Biden relies upon. But re regardless of all of that, the, the American people um, lost enthusiasm for this effort more than a decade ago. And so, you, yeah. you know, my old bus was still president and rallying public support for the faraway effort. There was always a little bit more for Afghanistan than Iraq, but this too was viewed as um, an extremely difficult place to put our men and women. And I, I mean, I said it there. I, I stand by exactly what I said. If anything, it's, it's borne out as, as exactly the dynamic. And I'm sure you see on social media, our viewers are enraged. They feel that this is a pylon. Now, responding to just those reactions is the gateway to something resembling Fox News. We stay on the story and we cover the facts. And the White House understands that. But the White House feels that this dynamic is also very true, that this war-weary public is with them, but they are acutely aware that even some Democratic stalwart allies on Capitol Hill do not see this the way Joe Biden does. We, yeah, they may not see it the way Joe Biden does, but that's not important. As Nicole said there, for once, it figures out that the president is aligned with the Americans as opposed to with the military industrial complex. Whether that stays uh, longer, because we know he was always against uh, Afghanistan, staying in Afghanistan or escalating in Afghanistan, but he hasn't been, let's say, the most, uh, call it a pacifist, because we're, we all defend ourselves, but uh, he has not rejected to a hell of a lot of military operations. So we'll see if America is entering a new, a new zone a new way of being where we don't just look at that we are the mightiest power on the earth to solve problems, but that we can actually negotiate out of problems. Because after all, if, if one thing the Taliban showed is that uh, you can have all the power, the nuclear, the nuclear bombs and anything, but if, if you cannot use them effectively to neutralize your opponent, your opponent is likely to win because, like the, like the Taliban has always said, you, we have the time. We have the time, and we've been there 20 years. And what do we have to show for it? We left there to oust the Taliban, and, we let, and we're leaving there with the Taliban about to take entirely and full control. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where... Yes, the Taliban back in control. The Taliban back in control. Okay, let's see. Uh, Eric Hayes says, not knowing how fast Taliban was moving faster when they were warned in July. Oh, boy. There we go again. There we go again. All right, Rose Williams. Did anyone hear Eddie Glaude talk about why Democrats aren't using their power to push things through? He gave several possibilities, and finally, he proposed that maybe appear... You know, I'm not going to finish reading that, Rose, for one reason. Great minds think alike, my dear beautiful lady. Guess what? I have the clip, and you are going to love it. All right, uh, so that comes up next. Bridge, MCP says, crystal clear about nonsense. AVQ says... Bridge, I add plus one to the share, but you shared it as friends only. Bridge, how do you share that as friends only, my beautiful lady? You have to share this stuff to be wildly viewed. 
I'm playing with you. You you know that you you have your own privacy concerns. I'm just messing with you, uh, Bridge MCP. Uh, let's see, let's see what else we have here before I go to the last video. Uh, before I go to the last video, anything else anybody wants to say? Uh, Rose says fantastic. Uh, Bridge is trying to talk to AVQ, I guess. Anyhow, if nobody has anything else to say, I'll play the last video, and then we'll end the show with whatever you guys want to talk about. So as I play the video, start throwing things in there for us to discuss. Here we go. When in doubt, when in doubt, just blame the other for the problem you created, which is exactly what Dan Patrick did. He and the great Greg Abbott, they decided to destroy Texas. They decided to allow unmitigated spread of COVID in Texas. And now that it's a problem, what are they going to tell their people? Blame the other guy. Those black people didn't get vaccinated. And because they didn't get vaccinated, you know what? That's why the disease is spreading throughout Texas. I want you to listen to this and then let's take it on the other side. Because it is amazing how this is constantly done. Check this out. We're coming after your state uh, really quickly here and as a response coming after your state yes. because the increased COVID numbers, hospitalizations, deaths are up in Texas. It's time for us to get serious. This stuff about the voting rights bill and all these bills to protect the voter. We've been kind of blaming Republicans for not getting it done, right? They're the ones stopping progress for us to ensure that voting is good for everybody, is applicable to everybody. And we blame them. But the reality is Democrats have it in their hands to make the change if they want to. And that is by carving out an exception in the filibuster. They choose not to do it and they, they use it on false pre pretenses. Because when Republicans really want to get what they need to get done done, they go ahead and they create a carve out in the filibuster. The same with, de with Democrats. They've done it several times with regular judges, with Supreme Court judges, with budget reconciliation, etc., etc., etc. Now, where it comes to our democracy, one would think that you would pull out all stops if you have to create a carve-out for democracy. You would. Why wouldn't the Democrats do that? When they run the risk of losing the House, when they run the risk of losing the Senate, why wouldn't they do it? Why would they allow voter suppression to reign? Eddie Glaude says something that we've been talking about on Politics Done Right for a long time. Here is the perfect corroboration. No one's asking them to get uncomfortable. They're asking them to do something that Republicans do in their push for federal judges on the bench. It's, it's you know, we have put aside the filibuster as a country, both political parties. It's not a law. It's not in the Constitution. It's a norm. Where do you think the head the Democrats are in their headspace about doing something abnormal to protect the right to vote. I'm not sure, Nicole, and, and I, I think there are two ways in which we could read this, right? And you use the word existential. I think for Republicans, given the, the data that Matt cited with regards to the, uh, the changing demographics of the country, they view those demographics as an existential threat to the country that they think should be, that they believe America should be a white nation. So they're approaching the issue of voting in the ballot box as an existential question, while many Democrats are approaching it as a procedural or process question. That's the generous yes. read, Nicole. The more cynical read, the more cynical read is that the voting, this, this, uh, uh, the For the People Act actually empowers voters across the board and would jeopardize Democrats' political position. It would make insurgent candidacies even more likely because they could mobilize and, and actually get out the vote in very different, more people can vote, which means that politicians, no matter where you are on the political spectrum, would have to defend themselves. They would have to defend their seats. So the cynical read is not about Republicans and Democrats. It's about politicians who are interested and invested wow. in keeping their seats. And we have to understand that as one reason why some of these folk are hesitant, Nicole. That's the only reason I can jump. That's the only conclusion I can come to, because they're saying one thing out of their mouths and they're doing another thing in terms of their practice. Well, and so, Eddie, let me let me follow up. I mean, there'll be another vote in the House um, on the uh, the new John Lewis Voting Rights Act. 
And I guess your point is it'll pass the House, but if 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 the the fact of the what of federal legislation is what they're afraid of, maybe it'll meet the same fate. Is that your worry? Yeah, absolutely. So you can provide yourself political cover with the theater of passing this legislation in the House, knowing that there's not a filibuster carve out in the Senate, knowing that it's going to die in the Senate. And so we see civic violence happening not only in our day to day lives. Uh, as Republicans attack the voting uh, rights of, of millions of Americans, young, black, uh, poor, and the like. Uh, and then we see the civic negligence on the part of politicians who refuse, in some ways, to protect American democracy. And it's not just a Republican issue now. It's all of them, Nicole. And that's the magic. As if we look at it as a Republican stop in progress. Republicans are doing what they think is necessary for them to maintain power. And Democrats, the ones that are preventing the filibuster, are doing it to make sure that they can still maintain a modicum of power. Because in their opinion, remember, if you take a poll of the United States of America, most Americans are progressive. Most Democrats or a large percentage of Democrats are not progressive. A large percentage of Republicans are not progressive. So the idea here is this is really not about the establishment or about Democrat or Republican. This is about making America a progressive country that benefits all. And if we really have the freedom to vote our intent, if we are really going to vote our values, irrespective of Republican or Democrat, we generally have similar, congruent values. And that is what all sides fear. That our value system defeats the party system. And when that happens, remember my motto. Whenever we unite, Appalachia, the ghettos, and the barrios, we would have won the fight. And, you know, I stick with that comment. All these things are, again, uh, Eddie Gloud hit it on, and, I, and you guys have heard me say that before. Whenever there's something that these guys deem important enough, they'll create a carve-out for the filibuster. The uh, voting is going to... Some Democrats... Do not mind losing the House, the Senate, or the presidency. There will always be Democrats and there will always be Republicans. And there, there will always be a need for either side. And the ones with connections will always have some sort of power. They will constantly get money from some people. And they're rather that than to have an absolutely real democracy. Only we can demand a real democracy. Only we can ensure a real democracy by superseding the games that they're playing. What do I mean by that? Forget about a change in filibuster. It's not going to happen likely. Probably not going to happen. But we can overpower that by having such a mass output in 2022 that the ch not even cheating will work. Not even cheating will work because it would be so overwhelming. And I'm not only talking overwhelming with progressives and Democrats. I'm talking about overwhelming with Republicans who finally come out and say, I am going to finally start voting my interest. And my interest this year will likely not be Republican, but it will be progressive. And progressives right now happen to be, you know, seedings have taken, sipping with Democrats, that's a party that they're they are in right now. And that is what it's going to take. That is what it's going to take. Okay, E2247 says, Thank, uh, that is until one kid gets 10 cookies while at least one other kid gets zero cookies. You know, um, I want to, actually, you know who, did, who said something of that sort? Today, Tom Hartman had a tweet. I, I retweeted it. Tom, Tom Hartman had a piece that says, how the billionaires, sort of like how the billionaires keep power, right? Let's say you have 100 cookies. The billionaire has 99 cookies. 
the white guy has one cookie and the POC uh, guy has zero cookies. And the billionaire looks at the white guy and says, hey, that guy wants to take your cookie. <laughs> that was from Tom Hartman this morning on his Twitter. Go to the Tom Hartman Twitter. Follow Tom Hartman. By the way, follow me as well on Twitter, Egberto Willis. Follow Egberto Willis on Twitter. And go follow Tom Hartman also on Twitter. And, and take a look at his feed for today. I, I could stop laughing after I read, uh, read it. Anyhow, uh, let's see. Michael Rudnick says, I'm waiting for my friend to come by, pick me up, and then I'm gone for the night. Catch you next week. Brother Michael Rudnick, thank you so kindly for being here, and thank you for your contributions. Uh, Michael Rudd, let's see, also says, if you can carve out the filibuster for one issue, why not carve out for every issue until the filibuster is a moot point? Perfecto mundo. I agree with you 100%. Rose Williams says, I think we need to come up with some creative ways to hold our representatives responsible. I know of one, Rose. Vote them out. Can we bring legal action against these uh, uh, do-nothing representatives? We know they can push these policies through if they want. You know, I wrote an article for Daily Coast that says we should charge them with malpractice, right? And Tom Hartman saw that article in Daily Coast, and he played it the next day on his show. While I'm, I was in the gym working out, listening to the Tom Hartman show in the morning, right? Because at, at KPFT, we play the Tom Hartman show. Uh, we, we cut it down from three hours to one hour, and we play it on KPFT in the mornings. Uh, that's from the day before. So I'm working out hard, and I'm listening to Tom Hartman, and you know that music that he played? Da, 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 and then it says... I read an article from the Daily Coast written by Egberto Willis. I was like, oh, Tom is quoting my, my article on the show. I was like, thank you, man. And, but uh, anyway, actually, I wrote an article about that, uh, Rose, where I talked about, um, about charging these guys with malpractice. It would probably have to be a civil case. Uh, and I don't know how, how far it would get, but, you know, I think it's worth a try. Uh, let's see. Bridge MCP says, Michael, you're quick. LOL. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else. Michael Rodin says, Egberto, I, I go. One last one for the screen. So you want to take, oh, oh, there you go, my brother. I got to put that one on the screen. I've got to put that on the screen. This is from Michael Rodin, folks. A billionaire, a worker, and an immigrant are sitting at a table with a thousand cookies. The billionaire takes 999 cookies and say to the worker, watch out, that immigrant is going to take your cookie. <laughs> that is another, that's a permutation of the one that, uh, that Tom Hartman had this morning. Those kids did great, on, let's see what he said. These kid, those kids did great until one kid had no cookie, even in Montessori, second year old class. Maywood says, actually the quote is, there are 10 cookies, the billionaire takes nine cookies. Then he turns to the white guy and says, that black guy is trying to take your cookie. Thank you for correcting me, Maywood. You know, hey, you know that, that thing that they do, right, where you go ahead and you, you have ten people in a line. And you tell the first person to tell the next person to pass a secret down the line. By the time the secret reaches down, the line is completely different than how it started. I guess I just proved that point again. All right, let's see. E2246, how young they learn. Petition Queen says, I'd like to sue them for antitrust, crowding out their competition in the primaries and in the general election. More options, please. That's why I like ranked choice voting. And by the way, Petition Queen, welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Is there anybody I have yet to salute? I don't think so. But if, it's, if, if you're here, put your name down in the list because I like to make sure and salute everybody that give us the honor of being here in the PDR Passe. Uh, let's see. Telephone chain. Yeah, I know what you mean. Petition Queen says, love you, Egberto. Love you too, Petition Queen. Love you too, Petition Queen. All right, let's see what else. Folks, please remember, if you are on YouTube, support us. Click the join button and become a part of our PDR Passe. We need you. I cannot do this without you. 16 hours a day, my brothers and sisters, cutting videos. I need help. I need help. I need to hire somebody to help me. So help me do that. Go to, just click that join button. It's pretty inexpensive. Or you can just go ahead and go to politicsandright.com slash support. Politicsandright.com slash support. And give us a hand out here. Get some of our books. Politicsandright.com 
slash books. Politicsdoneright.com slash books. I'm going to have to check out of here five minutes early because i got to prepare for a 4 o'clock interview. Uh, so I want to make... Let's see. Bridge MCP says, you're here chatting, sharing, learning. All this isn't free. Support the show. Become a politics... A PDR Posse member. Please listen to Bridge MCP because you know what? We are going to do this over and over again. And for all those who don't have hope that the country will change, I can tell you one thing. We are going to change this country. One person at a time. I repeat. One person at a time. What do I mean by that? A lot of my friends think I'm crazy. They think it's no hope. They say... Why not just go make it? Do it. You don't have to. Why are you trying to save the world? Why are you trying to do these things? Who the hell do you think you are? And then the answer comes back and you say, Hey, you know what, man? I had a great time in the United States. It's a great country, great people. Do you ever get pissed off? I'm a pig-headed guy. Do you ever get pissed off when you see a bully taking advantage of somebody? You know, especially when somebody that is not fighting back. Do you ever get pissed off? You know, I've my company for a long time and it's, it's wound down all the way down. It makes peanuts now, nothing. Somebody else took it over. I, I, I gave it to somebody else to take it over. But all along the while, you've seen, people, you, you've seen this system taking advantage of people, bullying people. The worst part about it is we know how to do it in a good way. That you don't really feel it. You know when you see that child being bullied or when you see that adult being bullied, you want to do something about it. You want to do something about it. That is how the PDR posse feels. We are going to do something one person at a time. And our expectation is that one person that we bring on board will bring on board others. I'm not only talking about the PDR Posse. I'm talking about geometric progression, the changes that you are going to make in your social circles that are not intersecting with our social circles. That is what we're talking about. All of us are part of that change. And it's really true. And it really can happen, and we can make it happen. My name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you know how I end this, baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.